Today is a very brief conceptual overview about what independent components analysis or ICA is. Specifically, we're talking about that in a, a neural imaging setting. And there's a tool called Melodic in FSL which allows people to do this independent components analysis. So what is it? Why would you want to use it? When is it appropriate? That's what we're going to cover. So first, ICA can be thought of as decomposing something really complex into simpler components. So if you added up all these simpler components, you would get the more complex thing. Think about it in terms of music. Right? You might have a very complex chord, let's say the Tristan chord from, from Wagner. And, <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of a nerd. But let's say you had that, and it's, a, it's kind of a dissonant chord, but you can decompose that into each of the sine waves of the individual notes constituting the complete chord. Right? So, ICA does something similar in a neuroimaging setting. All we're doing is we're taking uh, this complex data set, which we have a ton of voxels, a bunch of time points, and so we have a time course of activity for each voxel. Right? So there's a spatial component and there's a temporal component. And what ICA tries to do is decompose this entire spatio-temporal map into spatial and temporal components. And then says if you just took the multiplication of these two matrices that we've teased apart, you should get the original thing you started out with. Now the number of independent components is really up to you. You can have as many components as you want based on how many time points you have, or you can have very few independent components. Now usually the optimal number is somewhere in between those because overfitting can lead to fragmenting all of your components into meaningless things, and underfitting can lead to not appropriate loading on each component. So you might not have the actual uh, adequate amount of variance on the components that you specify. So that's been broad strokes with independent components and analysis is. And if you have something like a task where somebody just had visual information and auditory information. So you flash a bunch of pictures at somebody or you show them a video where somebody's moving their hands a lot, you know, gesturing like this a lot. And then you have an auditory component where somebody listens to something, say a piece of music. Okay, so the visual component, auditory component. If you fed that into ICA, it could try to decompose those into the visual component and the auditory component. You should see a spatial map which primarily loads on visual cortex and an auditory map primarily loading on auditory cortex. The important thing to keep in mind is that ICA is what we call model free. In traditional analyses, univariate analyses, we have a model where we have what we think the ideal time course should look like. We know what occurred when, and so we build that into a model, and we can convolve that with, with whatever basis function we want, usually a, a canonical hemodynamic response function. And then we say, well, how much do we have to modulate that to fit the, the time course? So we have a model, we try to fit that to the time course. Model free means we don't have any of that, we just have the raw data that we you know, had from the scanner, we might have pre-processed a little bit, filtered it a little bit, but it's more or less in the same state that it came out with. And ICA will try to decompose that into whatever components explain the most variance in that data set. And the way Melodic orders it is by the highest amount of variance, next highest amount of variance, and so on. What that means is that any task that elicits a lot of activity and explains a lot of variance will load on the first components and then gradually tapering out from there. You can imagine you could use this both in a, a task-based data set, like the one I just explained with auditory and visual components, or you could use it with, say, a resting state data set where you're just trying to identify different networks that seem to correlate together. Okay. So that's it for the very brief overview. Um, we'll get into more of the nitty-gritty in the future tutorials, but I just wanted to lay some of the, the groundwork and also move my hands around a lot so that uh, you guys can see one of my little uh, mannerisms.